Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. During the first year of World War II, Europe is in turmoil. Hitler invades Holland and Belgium. Poland and Czechoslovakia had already fallen, and the Dunkirk evacuation was just two weeks away. France is ready to fall, and America is not involved yet. What will it take to pull America into the war? Let's meet my guest historian, Kathy Fries, to learn more. Welcome. It's nice to be here again. He does it again, doesn't he? I know, he? this was one of his better ones, I thought. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. One year in the, in the war, and so much happens, oh. and there is Mr. Churchill right in the yeah. center, yeah. practically every Happy page. Happy as can be, he's finally prime minister, after having wanted to be prime minister for years. Yes, for decades, <laughs> and so, we are going to prepare a, a kind of a, not a, I don't want to say typical, because I don't know what typical was at the time, but what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to, I'm going to make carrots in the second segment, because the British, to, to fool the Germans, said that the R, they fed the RAF pilots a lot of carrots so they could see better they in the dark, <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't really true. <laughs> but. Um, and then I'm going to do a uh, eggless chocolate cake because it was hard to get eggs. I think this is a great idea. And that looks like a terrific recipe. Well, I'm going to make a simple roast chicken and we'll have some fingerling potatoes and some green beans right from the garden behind Checkers. They had, you know, sort of like a little truck garden, a little kitchen garden, and they used all of their produce. And this was a busy place, wasn't it? It was, and what I also liked in the book that one of Churchill's inner circle, the prof, as they called him, who yes. was a vegetarian, yes. but he raised chickens. And so he gave chickens and eggs to Churchill you, during the war. That, you know, it was amazing. And you mentioned also how many people gave food because Churchill had a party maybe every second or third night, didn't he? Yes, he was always having people uh, entertaining, you know, trying to get things done. And it, they they were under the same rationing that everybody else was, but then they would give get extra. They would get extra, but he, not enough. He had a bit of a budget, but his friends would contribute when he was sort of mulling over the discomfiture of not having everything he wanted. Right. But it is simple, and it's a meal that many people forget to prepare: a roast chicken and just little potatoes. You're doing the carrots. I'm doing mm -hmm. the green beans right from the garden, and. Uh, or we've also brought some alcohol. Oh, you know, that was the other thing that amazed me. Churchill drank all the time. Yes, he did. <laughs> we, we were absolutely dumbstruck. Uh, he'd start in the morning with brandy, a little, couple little snorts of brandy <laughs> to get the day going, and then he would transition into scotch for the afternoon, and lo and behold, in the evening, Champagne, wine, yes. and they'd be up until two, three, four in the morning. And it wasn't just party. He had his cabinet there. Oh, he was working there. the entire he, time. He had his people there. You can relax and talk over food. He learned more about what all of his cabinet ministers were doing. It was very clever. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. sure Clementine was not doing the sheets, nor was she cooking. No. She had help, and these people would stay overnight. And this. This was quite a time in England and in the life of the Churchill. So I've got some string beans to cook. My yeah. chicken is in the oven. I'm going to pull it out and do some more so you can see it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start with the cake. Um, the, and this recipe was developed during World War II because of rationing. So I'm taking flour and a cup of sugar and cocoa 
which I actually I read the British had a hard time getting cocoa, but I, I'm doing it. So how here. you had a secret uh, network to get your cocoa, yeah, well, right? Well, the Quebec would send chocolate to England. It was so interesting. The king would send partridges and ducks and all, and um, it, well, they he, all contributed. And he loved this, didn't he, Churchill? Oh, absolutely. Well, he was the first Lord of the Admiralty under Chamberlain, and he had been the first Lord in World War II. One, One. also. Mm -hmm. um, and that was in the midst of the, the big uh, brouhaha in Gallipoli. In Gallipoli. And he was relieved of his duties yes, at so that time. Yes, so he was out of power for a long time. And um, so the government fell after Poland, after, the, after Poland was invaded. And uh, Chamberlain was the prime minister, and they had to get a different, uh, and the prime minister and the king was not real thrilled about asking Churchill to be the prime minister. He be wanted Lord Fulton. Halifax. Halifax, because Churchill, they felt, was uh, unpredictable. Unpredictable, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And there, you know, we all think that he was loved, beloved by everybody, but no. actually, when you read about his leadership style, he was the right person for this, Absolutely. wasn't he? Absolutely, and the king was very nervous and then by the end of the first year of the prime, Churchill's prime ministership, the king writes in his diary, I have the perfect prime minister. Well, he could adapt to things that were changing all the time. In fact, he sort of relished this, um, conf not confusion, but hubbub. I love the word hubbub. Um, and he could just sail through it. Now his wife, on the other hand, had a harder time with this. She would get kind of worn out, worn down, and she actually corrected Charles de Gaulle oh, when yes. he and came she for She just dinner. got furious at him and stomped out yes. of, and, of and, the dining room. And Churchill says something like, my, my, my wife speaks rather good French, wouldn't she say? <laughs> <laughs> he says that to de Gaulle. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there is so much going on. It is quite a time. I think the, the older Brits are kind of all dying out from that period, but I don't think they ever had such a gusto of, for living. And that's one of the reasons Churchill did so well. Of course, he, he, his speeches were fabulous. Oh, he knew how to talk. He knew how to talk, and, but he didn't um, sugarcoat anything. No. I mean, he told the British people how difficult it was going to be. Yeah. And yet then, always at the end, he would ro you know, make Rally. them feel yeah, Bring them like up. we were going to do this. Yeah. I mean, he made them feel a real part of it. Well, and it's like saying you, you've got to share the horrible things that are going on. Let the people know how they can help. And he, he had words, and he had so much confidence. He, you know, he thought he was going to be, uh, he worked to become prime minister. He went to the best schools. He was not the best student, but he had the conf confidence. He knew how to talk, and he just succeeded, and he spent his whole life um, yeah. preparing for this. Now, I'm making this cake, and instead, uh, you make three little wells in the, uh, hmm. this, I, I've, uh, yeah. So I, I make this. I want to say, oh, well. Yeah, and then I take, and I take a third mm -hmm. of a cup of vegetable oil and put it in one hole. Yes. While you're doing that, I am steaming green beans. Then vinegar, take a this is interesting. tablespoon vinegar. of vinegar. Oops, and, and that oil went in the wrong hole, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> it looks like sand dunes here. Yeah, tablespoon of vinegar. Then vanilla. Then vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla. Do you have a cup of cold water there? I'm going to need one. I'll get one for you. Okay. Is this your cup? Yeah, no, there's a cup oh, right there. Right, right in front of me. A pink cup, all right. Oh, pink cup, that reminds me. 
Clemmy used to make a romper suit for Winston. Yeah. Uh, he called it his siren suit. suit. But everybody else. And pink and and kimonos with dragons. And oh, and he, he wore slippers with uh, pom-poms on the front. I'm going to put a little more water in here because it's not quite... Not quite a cup. cup. Oh, your assistant has failed you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are preparing two courses now. You're going to mix this up. I'm going to just mix it and just until it's mixed. All right. And... And then we're gonna bake it in the oven. Just pour it in the pan and bake it in the oven. Just get it mixed. This is good for people, for it's, vegans? Uh, actually, yes. And, and lactose this, intolerant Right, because I have a granddaughter who's lactose intolerant and she can eat this cake. Oh, I want the copy of this. I think it's great. So, um, so in one minute, we'll be in the oven, right? Right. And the chicken's cooking. I would not normally use butter for my granddaughter to. Well, but that's right. But what would you use? Some vegetable I, oil? I, vegetable oil or um, Crisco, you know. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. That's what I use in place of butter. And I yeah. do a lot of spraying the Pam. Pam. And uh, yeah, that you sort could of use thing. Pam or whatever. But uh, the Churchills wouldn't here. use that. They would use butter, wouldn't oh, they? Oh, yeah, sure. If they could get it. I yes. mean, during the war. You know, that was difficult. We grew up on margarine because the butter was used for the war effort. And uh, so I didn't know anything about butter, really. Um, all right. So then and we're we, just going to pour this in and put it in the oven. And how long are you baking about it About 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So we will time this. And I have another um, hour to go on my chicken, so I would well, say... The, the thing I really liked about this book, too, and I know there's some people that didn't like it, because of it, but I liked it because they were talking about normal everyday th things that were happening. Uh, you know, like Mary, his youngest daughter, uh, going to parties, going to parties, bars, and, uh, bars dancing, and wanting to get engaged, and they're talking. Her, they out talked of, her out of it. You and should live life a little longer, darling Mary. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Avril Harriman, you know, was one of the ones who told her. Live your life. Don't be in don't such a Don't get married. Hurry. Right. So you want me to open this? You want to yeah. get it in here? And we want you to, um, we're going to take a little break here. And uh, we're going to show you some pictures of the Blitz. The Germans are preparing. They're going to bomb whatever. They're going to bomb London for months. They're going to kill everybody they can. And and they thought the English were going to oh, roll over and die. Roll over in less than a week. And that and her church, I mean, not church, Hitler even had them start building scaffolding for his victory oh, yes. party. And his parades in London and, when he was successful. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about that. This is such a, a year in the life of the world. And so when we come back, we'll talk about that and much more. We'll be right back. And we're back and we want to talk about this infernal, interminable bombing of London and then outside of London. And what were those Germans planning to do? Hitler thought, Hitler and Goering, who, is that the way you pronounce Goering, Goering? Well, Ger Goebbels was the one that did the uh, planning for the Yeah, airplane. but Goering was the Air Force man who said, oh yes, we're going to, we'll, the English will They'll roll Surrender over. In, a yeah, in a week. And they were gone. so mad at Churchill because Churchill kept getting the British to realize that they were going to win, they were going to get through this, and, and Churchill just had such a way of uh, getting marshalling finished, the people yeah. to... The people, and Beaverbrook, who was in charge of quadrupling the number of airplanes that Britain had, they were pitifully supplied. And Beaverbrook didn't want to do that because he didn't know, he said, I don't know anything about airplanes, but he, he, he did. did it. And he did it. And he worked people. And, and actually, the Germans were surprised. There's, they had 14,000 planes coming in one night over 
over England. And uh, it, it is incredible. They, they were sure they were going to win and then they, they would have all of Europe. Uh, but I think we better take a pause and have a little brandy. Oh, that's a good idea, we, but which is what Churchill will do. And uh, Churchill, of course, loved all that, Lo loved being, he'd come, everybody wanted him to stay below in the war rooms or, you know, yes. they didn't want him hurt. He'd be climbing up under on the roof. On top of the roof with the bombings going on. Because he just was sure he would survive. And there's one funny scene where it was a cold night and Churchill goes up to the top of, uh, I don't, can't remember what building it was, where he was, and he, he gets a little cold, so he st sits on the uh, chimney yeah. <laughs> thing where the uh, furnace is, and somebody has to come up because the whole, the whole building was full of smoke because he was <laughs> He's sitting to... <laughs> on the... the <laughs> <laughs> he was. He even took guests up there for the bombing. He and when he had the American Harry Hopkins come, he takes him up on the roof. I do think we have to have a little toast, toast to well, Harry Hopkins and oh yes, and to Churchill, the whole lot, that whole group. I mean, they were incredible people. They, I don't know how when they ever slept. I mean, they were working constantly. They took Churchill would take an hour nap. And he'd be all revved up, ready to go to, until two in the morning. Uh -huh. And then he'd stay in bed, and he would do all his paperwork in his uh, nightgown or nightshirt, and he would dictate to his secretaries, and they would all come and sit around the bed. I mean, he had a way of getting and work in the done. bathtub. In the bathtub too. And even when he went to visit Roosevelt, he would <laughs> hold meetings in the bathtub, and they would be standing around taking notes. I mean, this man was a character. He really was. Uh, and so we have a little toast here to get warm. He'd get the brandy and warm himself up and get going. And you're, you've got onions going and here? I've got onions going. And the other thing is, the first day he's prime minister, he says, well, I have to get America into the war. That, is that the was goal. his whole goal. Right. And he he sends over notes and he tells them what they're doing but they we need more of your equipment we need money we're going to we will have nothing to fight with and of course roosevelt just couldn't say sure here's the money he had to get the government to uh, and 48 were against getting in the war and 42 percent i'm sorry of the american people wanted to get in the war but then you had to you had to tell the companies and the owners of the companies, we need all these new products. My father was working at CG Con and his job was to convert the engraving, the engravers to production of, um, oh, what are those, gyroscopes. And he went for special training at Purdue for that. Isn't that interesting? Oh yes, because they were, they were artisans. They could engrave and they could work with these very fine gyroscopes. So th they had to convince the American corporations to get involved and many of them didn't want to that's why it took so long so who comes over to con to find out what England is doing and should America get involved yeah because Roosevelt had met Churchill once before yeah. uh, years before when Roosevelt was the Navy secretary and he didn't really like Churchill Churchill kind of I think oh, blew well, him off. He, and, uh, he's to the manner born, yeah. you know, and he just has all the right answers and everything. So Harry Hopkins comes over to check out England. And the picture of Harry. Harry is so sick, he's had stomach cancer. He, um, he needs help getting unbuckled in the airplane to get out of the airplane. He looks as if he's been sitting on his hat for the whole time, and he has this big, huge coat and he's really very delicate. And Churchill takes one look at him and thinks, who uh -oh. have they sent yeah. over here? But by the end of the time, they love him. They love him. And really, I'm going to find the book. I, there's a quote when oh. Hopkins, the night before Hopkins leaves. Oh, this is amazing what he says to, and to just, Churchill. Yeah, because Churchill is just, they're all on pins and they're, needles. They're, what are the British, America gonna what are the English going to do? And yeah. Um, uh, they want the Lend-Lease, that was before Lend-Lease, and Hopkins gets up and quotes from the Bible, the Book of Ruth, and says, Whither thou goest, I will go, 
and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. The people shall be my, thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Then softly he added, even to the end. And, and Churchill, Churchill starts wept. crying. Yes. They all. And Hopkins is going to go back and tell Roosevelt, we must be in this war. And I think it took another, I don't know, well, well Japan, the bombing, bombing, the Japanese bombing, uh, uh, Pearl Harbor for us to get in the war. That's why this But they did get so lend-lease because yes. they, the British were running out of material. And I'm going to get my, my own uh, lend-lease here. I'm going to go in the oven and get the chicken. And uh, pull and, it out. And Churchill was such a wonderful orator. Oh, yes. To get... Um, but the funny thing in, you know, we all, uh, and Larson at one point says, this is the year when Churchill became Churchill. When he knew that we were involved, right? Well, just that what Churchill did that first year from May 10th, this book goes from May 10th, 1940 to May 10th, 1941. And you know, at this time, they have bombed Coventry and Leeds and Manchester, and, and they thought they were going to take care of Britain. They were just going to do them in and it doesn't happen. And the thing is, why did they stop this Battle of Britain, the Germans, and go to Russia? That, that was their mistake. They could have beat the, the English and they, they make a different kind of decision. Yes. And, and Hitler, just like he thought England would surrender in a week, Hitler thought Russia would surrender. I'm closing the oven because my cake's yes. still baking. You, you do that. You um, get that done. Well, uh, But what there, was interesting, you know, we always think about Churchill's uh, speech short, like when Holland and Belgium uh, fell? fell and they start the and France falls. And he, he really knew how to get people into his corner. He knew how to bring them in. Right. And he, you know, that France fell unexpectedly. They thought the French would hold out. And Churchill does his blood, sweat, and tears. Yes. Uh, we have nothing to give but our blood, sweat, and tears, which is one of his all-time speeches. And that's when Churchill supposedly became Churchill because oh, of his yes. wonderful oratory. And he had to do the speech twice, first in Parliament and then at night over the radio, radio. to the people. But he was using smoking his cigar and had a cigar in his mouth the whole time and everybody thought he either was having a heart attack or, or he was, was drunk or he was <laughs> drunk <laughs> so we're putting our finishing touches on our dinner we invite you to checkers yes. to meet the gang yeah. we'll be right back Kathy Friesen and I have been discussing The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. I loved the book. I did too. I just love the I people. I like getting to know all the people around Churchill. Yes. Colville and his daughter and Beaverbrook. And, and Pamela. Pamela. Pamela and did me Averill Churchill. Ehrman and Averill uh, Ehrman. Uh, yeah, just so, so many people that I didn't know that much well, we had, we had a sprinkling May, of knowing, yeah. and then they're all together. But you get to know them as real people who had unbelievable amount of energy. Energy and support. They were bright. Many of them trained from birth to step into a position like this, and some, like Harry Hopkins, probably wasn't. But he knew how to deliver. He was amazing. Uh, and let's just talk about our simple lunch yes. or in our dinner at Checkers. Uh, we have the carrots with onions and in dill with uh, some almonds, because the British like the almonds, but the carrots to keep our eyes bright. When we're flying those when airplanes. When we're flying those airplanes. And here's the chicken. And you know, we were talking about every couple of weeks, bake a whole chicken and have your, your son or your, your husband slice it as they do in the manor, you know. And then we did some roasted potatoes, green beans from the kitchen garden, and? And then eggless chocolate cake. There were no eggs, no uh, butter in the cake, and you just spread I'm, some I'm powdered sugar over it. It's good for I'm vegans going to make it, yes. lactose intolerance. What people. I liked about this book was 
including everything, the history, the people, and his writing to me is delightful. Yes, it's one of his better ones, I think. It's right think up there with Devil in the White City. You and I have done three <laughs> books by Eric Larson. Yeah. So we're so glad you joined us today, and thank you well, for coming. Thank you you for always inviting me. add the right touch. Wow, well, it's fun. And so uh, remember, good food, good books, good friends, and good brandy make for a very good life. We'll see you next time. Bye. WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.